Welcome to this Evolution of Cornell Notes video. Here today, we're going to teach you the skill of doing Cornell Notes, not on a template, but on or in your book. So what do you need? Well, you need your exercise book. I know a number of classes are using these project books now. This is one I used when I was in university. There's my university number there. Uh, a pen and pencil and a ruler. So how do we do them in our book? Well, it's really, really simple. You get to a new page. This is why we love these big project books, because in science, we never really know what sort of day we're going to have. Do we need a big blank piece of paper to do a massive brainstorm or um, some grid paper or uh, lined? So blank paper is always a good place to start. So what do we do? Well, the first thing you need to do is take a ruler and do a nice margin down the left hand side of your book all the way down. OK, it doesn't have to be too neat. Then up the top, you just want to rule off a box up here as well. Now, the next step is to put up the top what you are going to be taking notes on. The title of the video, or uh, the book you're reading, or the paper you're um, researching, whatever it is, we put it up the top. So. That's your corner notes in my book. Now, there's a couple of extra bits of information we might want to put up here. Um, we might also want to put our reference, okay, which might include the date, okay, and the source. All right, uh, from whatever we are researching, that is really important information. And then you know every note under here is from this source, and you don't have to go back and try and find it later. The other thing you might want to include is a lot of us are using the SPC trap test now. And if we do, we might just want to include the score somewhere. Okay, See whether or not this source that we're researching is actually worth using. So just to refresh on where we put what, this is our notes section. This is where we take all of our information that we think might be relevant. We might make some brainstorms. We might do some pictures. We might even just write bullet points as well, all the way down. This can be quite messy. This is just you collating your thoughts, getting all of the information you think is relevant from the source. Next, we move on to our keywords on this side. Remembering it is also key ideas and concepts. We might want to put down some key questions as well. So we're making these down here. Also a place to put it maybe where you'll find the information as well. Okay, so we might put um, here, we might put diagram. And that might make you look that pictures are a good way to take notes. Might also be um, up here, might just be oh, they're bullet points. Might just put bullet, okay, whatever it is. Might be really important. Finally, when we think we've finished, now this can go on to the next page, where if we've got such good information coming from this source, all we do is we just rule down the left-hand side again. So we've got our place for our keywords. And when we finished our information, and remember, Cornell Notes is nothing without this last step, is we might summarize. Down here. Now, I've included the margin here because it's also a good idea to put our keywords, ideas, thoughts, all down here in a list. And when you're writing your summary, you should be able to write about all these key ideas as you go throughout your summary paragraph. This is the most important bit. This is the bit that you will then use in your writing or go back to to quickly summarize. Maybe it could be three or four pages worth of Cornell Notes. This is what makes Cornell Notes so powerful. The ability to take all of this waffle, all of this information, and put it into a nice 
summarized, concise paragraph. If you can do that, you'll be winning throughout all levels of your education, from year nine right through to university. I hope you like this video. Catch you in class.